here is around the leaf blower. Our road used to be 100% gravel, and every year when it snowed, the county would come through, plow the road, and the stones from the top of the road would end up in our front yard. Five years ago, they came through and chip and sealed our road, and I thought that would be the end of the stones in my front yard. But as you saw last week, I spent the day sweeping out those loose stones back onto the top of the road. That creates another problem because next year, the same thing is going to happen. I got to looking on the road out here, and where I didn't sweep the stones back onto the road, the opposite side, the stones are all clear and we're down to almost nothing. So that brings me to my challenge for today. I'm going to try to sweep off the stones from the edge of the road into the bucket of the backhoe because I hate the idea of just sweeping them across the road and putting them in the road ditch. So we might as well see if we can harvest those stones and maybe make use of them. So problem one is to try to see if we can capture those stones in the bucket of the backhoe. The second problem is Bill, the tractor that I have the sweepster broom attached to, as you may have saw last week, the engine is getting a little tired. He may not make it through the day or this task. I'm hoping since we're up on flat ground, he'll do it, but. Coat, dig, dry, DIY. Well, the last time I tried to use Bill on the sweepster broom here, I was way underpowered and I assumed that the engine's getting tired and wore out, but I had a few viewers comment that it was time for a tune-up or it was starving for fuel. So I do want to check that out before I get going on the rocks today on the road just to see if maybe this is something simple. I'd feel pretty dumb to scrap this engine had I not checked it out and, and only assumed that it needed rebuilt. So I'm gonna do a quick compression test and that'll kind of help me decide whether or not I wanna pursue any potential fuel issues or anything like that. All right, for those folks that don't know, this Giz Willie right here is a compression tester. And basically you thread this hose into the spark plug hole and attach the gauge. And then you spin the engine over to see how much pressure builds. You're measuring the air pressure that the cylinder can create. And uh, that tells you what the compression is. I should do this when the engine is hot. I'm doing a cold test right now just to kind of get a baseline and then I'll check it after I get it good and warm. Then I'll see what kind of difference I have under temperature. Gonna attach my gauge. Should mention before doing this, make sure you have both spark plugs removed. This is a two cylinder engine. I got the other one pulled out. That way it doesn't try to start while you're doing this. <laughs> That's about 80. I think the minimum on a B43 Onan is 100. Yikes, that's not good. Below 60. So with one side at 80 and one side below 60, I think this is either needs to be a rebuilt or a new engine. Well, you might be able to understand why I picked up Bill for a hundred bucks. I've been nursing him along for the last couple of years, knowing that the engine was probably a little tired. Also, he's developed a pretty good leak underneath from the steering orbital. So that's another factor that weighs in on my decision on what I should do with him. But I'd like your feedback. What do you think? Put a new engine in Bill, fix him all up, or just let him be put out to pasture and move on. I got a couple other tractors I could work with. I could switch and swap back and forth. I've got a 316 that's got a really good 25 horsepower engine in it, but it doesn't have a front PTO. And I've thought about trying to, to mate those two together to make one really nice tractor that I could use all around. So I need to round up some helpers and we need to get out there and get to work before it rains. And you want to keep it like almost like pretty much scraping the ground as you go yeah. backwards. Yeah. You want it as low to the ground so that hopefully the stones will kick up into the bucket. Have you maybe run the broom a little bit and have Kara in the backhoe and I'll kind of watch. And... Dad on the sweepster, Kara in the backhoe.
actually pretty full, so I'm gonna go dump it in the dump truck, and then we'll keep going. So all the loose stones are here because when the county comes through and does the chip and sealing, they pour a loose, clean stone on top of a layer of emulsion. And that stone is supposed to stick to the emulsion and then not come off the road. But what ends up ultimately happening is they put too many stones on and then some of them can't stick and they eventually wind up along the edge of the road. When the county comes through and plows snow, they displace those loose stones from the edge of the road into the ditch, or in this case, my yard. And you can see it all along the road. So these are all stones that would have otherwise been put into the ditch. I'm just cleaning them up in front of my property. All right. This work isn't working too bad. When we first started, we were getting some stones into the windshield of the backhoe, and that wasn't good. But now that we've figured out where to keep it tight, I'm not getting hardly any stones bouncing into the window, so I think we're good there. I got a few little bitty ones that are hitting every now and then, but not a big deal. Just trying to maintain that distance and get as many as we can in the bucket. Got another full bucket to dump, so not full, or only a quarter full. Well, as I'm doing this, I'm worried about what the county might say, but you know, the more I think about it, if you're if you're a reasonable person, what? What happened? What happened? This drive shaft came out of there. And it hooks to right there. The U-joint is shot in this drive shaft, but uh, I'm going to grease it up and see if we can make it last just to finish this up, because then I don't, hopefully won't be using the sweepster anymore. I <laughs> wonder if it, that drive shaft didn't catch on that. I think it did, probably. Wow. I grease it every time I use it every 10 years. Okay, that's good. I think I got it turned out enough. Shaft is back in there. Tighten her up. Maybe that's enough grease to let us finish this job and never use the broom again. I don't know. All right. We're going to try this again now that we got the drive shaft back on. Hopefully, it continues to work. What I started to say before that drive shaft came off was that, you know, my reasoning for this is that uh, the county kind of plowed all of these stones off the road and it was clear and then I obviously swept them out of the yard back up onto the road and I wouldn't think they would have a problem with this seeing how we just do this thing every year back and forth where I sweep them back up onto the road and then they come through in the winter and then plow them off the road into the grass and I understand it I don't fault the county because what else are you supposed to do when there's loose stones on top of the road and you're running a snow plow it's inevitable that happens but uh, hopefully they don't come knocking now because I've uh, cleaned up the stones along the edge. So forgive me, please, county. It actually looks pretty good. This looks about like what the rest of the road does now or the where I didn't put the stones back up on the road, so. Look at old Bill go. I keep trying to justify in my mind that this is okay. <laughs> All these stones were out there, so. Yeah. All right, we'll do the last cleanup. Well, Dad is finishing up getting the rest of the loose stones off the top of the road, and uh, I think that looks good. 
I think hopefully all parties involved are happy. Oh yeah, I wanted to check on Bill to see how his compression is once he's warmed up. All right, I'm back in the shop now after getting Bill good and hot out there sweeping stones. I want to check compression now that the rings have had a chance to be warm and expand and make sure that there's no secret to super compression now that it's warm. Got a loose ground there. 80 PSI here on the right hand side. This one was less than 60 I think last time. That one did improve a little bit. It's like it's about 65 so I guess it's a little bit better. Well, you know, I am no mechanic, so you let me know what you think. About 65 PSI on the left and 80 PSI on the right. I think 100 PSI is the minimum if you look at the manual or go by the John Deere specifications. So I think that low compression is probably the number one culprit on this tractor. But like I said, I am not a mechanic. So if someone else has something else they can offer, please let me know. Um, I don't think I want to go down the fuel path yet. I know it's got a newer fuel filter on it, but the, the fuel lines are notorious on these for going bad too. So, but I'm still, I'm still thinking the compression is the issue. This hour meter is showing 1600 hours on this thing. And usually that's about, that'll about do it for one of these Onans. <laughs> Thanks for all the feedback. I appreciate the comments about Bill and what we could do to maybe revive him. I don't know if he's headed for the scrap pile, if he's going to get recycled or blended in with one of my other tractors, but one way or another, I got to do something because when it's under load, it's just too much for the old boy. But I got those stones cleaned up on the road. Hopefully that won't be something I have to do next year. I'd be perfectly fine with not dealing with stones. Anyway, thanks so much for being here. I appreciate you watching. Hopefully I'll see you in the next video. Take care. All the loose stones. Here I got the leak blowing out.